Hi, I'm John Kirkman. I'm a music journalist and broadcaster from the UK. And welcome to the John Kirkman Files. What we do here is we make you aware of things that are available now, currently, or stuff that's been out in the past and you may have missed. This is fresh off the press, okay? It was released today on the 18th of November. Yes, Ian Anderson plays the orchestral Jethro Tull. Now, this may be familiar to some of you, but this format won't be. It came out on CD in 2004 and it was a DVD as well. What you get are oh, two vinyl albums here, and um, if we look at this here, I, I love the smell of vinyl in the morning. Okay, there it is. I, I, the vinyl feels like you've got something substantial to sort of put on your record deck and, and listen to, and it's pretty hefty vinyl as well, not like the late 70s where it was almost like a flexi disc. Um, Great tracks on this, so you don't need to know. I mean, skating away, um, all sorts of wonderful things. Uh, the current lineup, or the then current lineup of Jethro Tull, there is the man himself, Ian Anderson. And the great thing about Ian Anderson is that you never know what Ian Anderson's going to do next. And I love the fact that he's still moving forward. Yeah, the legacy of Jethro Tull is something, uh, quite frankly, to behold. But he doesn't rest on his laurels. He's always moving it forward. And of course, at the time, there were uh, quite a few bands who previously made um, albums with an orchestra. But unfortunately, a lot of them sounded like the orchestra had just been bolted on. The band were hammering away and the orchestra was soaring away in the background. There's an awful lot of Jethro Tull material, which really does benefit, no pun intended from from the orchestral arrangements and an added or orchestral um, accompaniment. And I think Jethro Tull are one of those bands. It really is a, a great album because it just shines a new light on a different format for Jethro Tull. And look, old bands either make new albums and the fan base buy them, or they just go out on the legacy circuit and play live. And there's nothing wrong with either of those things. Because if you can go out and play live to big audiences, it means you still have an audience. But a lot of artists were put off recording new albums purely and simply because the record industry wasn't really that interested. They're way, way, way more interested now. But um, also people were bootlegging them and just downloading them for free. So I guess most musicians thought, well... Why am I going to spend months recording an album just for somebody to give it away? Um, some bands, of course, will record an album and then give it away as a download. That's perfectly acceptable. But there's an awful lot of money goes into a project like this. Of course, it is live, so they will make the money, if you like, on the footfall across the threshold of the particular venue. But at the same time, I think that musicians have moved on a little bit from all oh, music must be free, man. Um, I think they should be paid for what they do. They are, at, at the end of the day, entertainers and performers. So I think very much along the lines of a lot of musicians that really, you know, if you're going to pay to see an audition, then that's fine. That's up to you. But if you're going to pay a legendary act or performance, I think you should pay the right amount of money for that gig. And I know ticket prices, we can argue till the dogs come home, literally. Um, I used to I paid two pounds to see David Bowie about a year before I paid seventy five p. I paid one pound sixty five to see Paul McCartney and Wings. I think I paid two pound fifty or two pounds to see Jethro Tull perform uh, Thick as a Brick. But you know we're talking over fifty years ago. These days ticket prices, yeah, they are pretty expensive. But you know what? If you're into a band and you want to see a performance, and these days production. Uh, for a lot of bands, is way off the scale than it ever would be. I mean, back 50 years ago, the bands would just shuffle on stage and do their thing, man. And I always loved that voodoo 
that you do when it comes to Jethro at all. There was, there, there was always a great sense of humour along with wonderful music. Now this is the first time it's been out on vinyl. It's been out, as I said, on DVD and CD before. It came out in 2004, so it's kind of 18 years since this has got a bit of a push and it's well worth it. Um, all the tracks here, as you can see, all the tracks are there for you to see. And I don't think you'd have an argument with any of that particular set list. Um, there's an awful lot coming from Jethro Tull. There has been a lot this year. We had the 50th anniversary of the uh, Thick as a Brick album on vinyl, complete with original packaging. That's coming out as a special uh, DVD, CD set. And um, there's more. There's always more from Jethro Tull coming next year. So once again, Ian Anderson, um, as they, as they say in Liverpool, kicking the can down the road. He's just moving things forward as ever. Let's face it, Jethro Tull. It's what Ian Anderson does, and he does it incredibly well and has done for many years. So this is back in the shops now or back from your um, favourite online uh, <laughs> distributor, whoever that may be. Let's make no bones about this. It's probably Amazon.com or .co.uk or .de, wherever you are in the world. Um, it's available from today. And um, like I've said, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. And I still maintain that vinyl, when it's done properly and it's remastered and remixed, sounds amazing. And I, yeah, I, I understand the, the need for CD and DVD, because I have both. But, you know, with this, you can't beat vinyl, can you? Look at that. What a wonderful cover. The man himself with the orchestra. And there inside, all those who took part. A rogues gallery, if ever I saw one, but um, a, low, a rogues gallery that we all love. So there it is. Ian Anderson plays the uh, classical, um, is this? Yes, the, plays the orchestral, I should say, Jethro Tull. It's out in the shops now, on vinyl for the very first time. If you're a Tull fan, you don't have to think about it, just get it. It's really, really well worth the money. And... Um, I think I'm going to go away and play some now. Thanks for watching.